Okay, so here in front of us, again, there is an illustration showing us the, the inside of a testis. Okay, all the components are uh, visible in this illustration. So uh, the thing is that the testis, each testis is, is surrounded or it's been covered by a very tough fibrous capsule, which is tightly adherent to the, the, the substance of testis that is known as tunica albuginea. Tunica albuginea, or uh, tunica albuginea, albus means white. So it's a white colored capsule, which is actually visible even if we perform an ultrasound uh, of a pregnant woman to find out the gender of the fetus. So this covering of the gonad would be actually uh, acting like an identification uh, feature uh, for, uh, for a sonologist and that if, if the gonad is surrounded by a whitish capsule, which is not present in an ovary, it's, it's the uh, hallmarking feature of a testis only. All right, so it's, it's the tunica albuginea can be used uh, for the identification of the gender of a fetus. Okay, so this tough capsule, just like any other capsule of any other organ in the body, sends off septae into the soft tissue or the substance of the testis and dividing the testis into lobules on different compartments, smaller compartments. Each compartment you can see over here is having these coily structures, these are the seminiferous tubules. And these seminiferous tubules are actually the factories of sperm. They are constantly producing sperms, okay? The seminiferous tubules, like each lo lobule of testes is having up to four seminiferous tubules, okay? And there are many lobules. Now you can see that at the medial border or the end of the testis, there is a, like a network sort of thing, okay? This is known as reti testis, okay? Because it's like a, like a network, a mesh. So the, the seminiferous tubules, they, em, they empty themselves through straight tubules. They are connected to the reti testis through straight tubules, okay? These straight tubules will form the reti testis, and then reti testis is is connecting itself to this coil body epididymis through duct, ductuli efferentes or efferent ductules okay these straight you know columns are the efferent ductules they are actually connecting the seminiferous tubules to, with the uh, epididymis okay a region that is it looks like a like a much globular. It's the head region, a much slender body, and then this region, which is tapering off, is the tail region or the tail end of the epididymis, and the cavity of this tail end is continuing with the cavity of the vas deferens or the ductus deferens. Okay, uh, epididymis is the storage house for the spermatozoa, which are not yet mature. So they get collected in the, or get stored in the epididymis and the cells of epididymis, they are going to help them get mature. By maturity, I mean to say that the spermatozoa is not capable of, or spermatozoa are not capable of movement. They are not motile while the sperm is a highly motile cell. So the motility is, is like happening here in this epididymis, okay? So I can say that epididymis is the storage center as well as the maturation center for the sperms, okay? So here is our vas difference or the ductus difference. It's, it's a thick muscular tube with a very, a uh, pinhead sized uh, narrow lumen, okay? This muscular tube is running within the spermatic cord along with the other structures and it is receiving 
its blood supply, the other artery of ductus deferens, which is a branch of the internal iliac artery. Okay, and there is a, a, a vein of ductus deferens which would be emptying its uh, blood into the testicular vein and the pampiniform plexus. We'll be talking about it in a minute. So the ductus deferens is, uh, is a long muscular tube. It's mainly uh, the main responsibility of the ductus deferens is the transportation of the, the motile sperms from the epididymis up to into the male urethra, the prostatic part of the urethra. Here is another layer or structure which is evident on this illustration that is a purple colored thing which is double layered. That is the tunica vaginalis. The tunics are like coats. They are the coats, they are the coverings uh, surrounding any organ, okay? So we have a tunica albuginea which is white colored capsule uh, completely investing the uh, testis, testis tissue. Then we have another covering, which is known as tunica, al, uh, tunica vaginalis. Okay, this is nothing but an extension of the abdominal peritoneum. When remember, when the testes were descending down, down from the lumbar region through the inguinal canal, they will they descended into the scrotum. So they actually pull down the peritoneum, the abdominal peritoneum with them, okay? So this tunica vaginalis, like any other capsule, is having a, para a, a visceral layer which is directly applied over the organ or the viscous, okay? And then it has, like it reflects, and then it forms a parietal layer, okay? So the tunica vaginalis is having a visceral layer and a parietal layer, and of course, in between the two layers, there is a potential space or cavity, which is the cavity of tunica vaginalis, and as I have said that, uh, it's nothing but an extension of the, of the abdominal peritoneum, so obviously it would be having some serous fluid within the cavity, just like any other organ like a pleura or pericardium, they are the, they have serous, like they are serous coverings of the organs, and and this fluid is helping the testis to move freely, like uh, uh, as a friction-free movement is possible because of the fluid present in the cavity of tunica vaginalis. This tunica vaginalis is covering, as you can see even in this illustration, that it's covering the, the testis all around, uh, all the surfaces like the anterior surface, the medial surface, the lateral surface, every surface has been covered by tunica vaginalis except for the region at the back, the posterior surface where the testes has been joined by the epididymis and the, the ductus deferens or the spermatic cord. This region is not covered by tunica vaginalis, okay? And only the, the top surface of the epididymis and some of the lateral aspect would be, or, or the back aspect would be covered by the tunica vaginalis. Uh, the, the parietal layer of this tunic would be extending, the visceral will stay with the viscous, and the parietal layer would be extending into the spermatic cord along with the blood vessels and the vas. And this, this extension of the tunica vaginalis is not known as tunica vaginalis, it, no, it is known as processus vaginalis, like a, like a finger-like projection or a process that is extending into the uh, spermatic cord. Sometimes what happens that the, this tunica vaginalis is, is it's a closed peritoneal sac. Once it, the testes are descended down from the abdominal cavity into the scrotum, the sac is like sealed, sealed off. There's no communication between the, uh, the abdominal peritoneum and the tunica vaginalis. But sometimes what happens developmentally the, the, the closure, the complete sealing off of uh, the tunica, two layers of tunica, doesn't happen. So what happens is the, there is some trickling down of the peritoneal fluid, the serous fluid, and there would be an accumulation of the fluid, um, like more than the required amount, into the two layers of tunica vaginalis. And that, that condition is known as the hydrocele, because there is fluid or water uh, that's 
you know, surrounding the testes. So here is an, an, an illustration that is showing us the coverings of the testes within the scrotum. So if we go from inside out, it's the tunica vaginalis, but before that is the tunica albuginea, which we have just discussed, then tunica vaginalis. And here is the processus vaginalis I was talking about. That's just the extension of the parietal layer of tunica vaginalis. Okay, that's going into the spermatic cord, which is this region. Okay, this region is the spermatic cord. Come back to the layers of, uh, or the coverings of the testes. After tunica vaginalis, there is fascia transversalis, or the internal spermatic fascia. Remember, we talked about the three fascias present in the spermatic cord. They are wrapping around the spermatic cord. It's the internal spermatic fascia, which is formed by the fascia transversalis. Then we have the this orange, this you know orange thing and the blue thing. So uh, this orange act, rather it's pink. It's the cremastric fascia, okay? This cremastric fascia is, is on top of the cremaster muscle, which is this blue thing, okay? So the cremastic, uh, cremaster muscle, we just have discussed that its role is whenever the cremastic, cremaster muscle contracts, it pulls the testis up towards the, close to the body in cooler temperatures. When the, the temperature outside is cold, so there would be retraction of the testis, pulling up of the testis towards the abdominal uh, or the pelvic region. And the, the cremaster muscle, it's a, it's, it's, it's a muscle which is supplied by the genital femoral or the genital branch of the genital femoral nerve, which is also present in the spermatic cord. It's one of the contents of the spermatic cord. This cremaster muscle has been assisted by another muscle which is present in the, in the scrotum. We'll come to that muscle in, in a few seconds. So this blue is the cremaster muscle. The pink is the cremaster fascia. And then this one is the, this, the grayish thing is the external spermatic fascia, which is the external oblique epineurosis, okay? So we have from inside out, tunica albuginea, tunica vaginalis, internal spermatic fascia, the cremaster, cremastric fascia, which is composed of cremaster muscle and the cremastric fascia, both, and then external spermatic fascia, which is the external oblique epineurosis. And then above all, here in the, the scrotal skin, we have something which is known as dartos muscle. It's a subcutaneous muscle, fat-free muscle. This is the muscle which will be assisting the cremaster muscle in, you know, lifting up the testes uh, from the scrotal uh, floor. And it's whenever the dartos would be contracting, you know, it, it will produce wrinkles on the skin of the scrotum. And that will help the cremaster muscle to pull up the, uh, uh, or lift up the testis towards the body. Here, uh, there is another layer which is present in, like it, it is in books, many books, it has been mentioned as tunica vasculosa. And you can see here, it's like it's partially present. The, the, it's been formed by the vessels of like the vessels, uh, the network of the blood vessels supplying the testes, they, they will form this, this layer, uh, which is known as tunica vasculosa. It's lying just outside the tunica, vaginal, uh, tunica vaginalis, okay? So if we, if we say that the testes is covered by tunica albagina, tunica vaginalis, tunica vasculosa, internal spermatic fascia, chromastic fascia, and then external spermatic fascia. And then on top is the dartos muscle along with the college fascia.